So in the luxury of the BRM uh, tent, uh, we've been outside looking at famous cars. We come inside and uh, have the privilege of talking to famous, famous F1 and BRM drivers, Howden Ganley and Mike Wilds. Um, Howden, let's talk to you first. Like Bruce, you came over from New Zealand and were looking for a, 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 a mechanics job and you ended up driving F1. How did that come about? Well, no, I wasn't looking for a mechanics job. I thought I was coming to be a racing driver. But unfortunately, I crashed my Lotus just before I left New Zealand. So by the time I got to England, I only had £25 left, which wasn't really enough to buy a drive in anything. So you started sweeping floors? Uh, I worked for a racing driver's school, which was a pretty dodgy operation. I finished up then working in... WD and H.O. Wills Tobacco Warehouse, stacking cartons of cigarettes, although I don't smoke. And then one day I got lucky, Bruce McLaren called me up and said, would you like to come and work for me? Because I'm just starting to build my team up. And did Bruce give you your first uh, racing drive? No, I had raced in New Zealand. I had a Lotus 11. I uh, raced that for a couple of seasons. But he gave me my first Formula One test here after I'd done three years of Formula Three and I'd sort of rode my way up to the top level of that. Uh, he called me up and said, uh, would you like to come to Goodwood uh, for a Formula One test? And, well, yeah, I certainly would. And at the end of the day, he said, right, you're taking my place in the Formula One team at the end of this year, 1970, he was going to retire. In the meantime, he said, I'm putting you in the works Formula 5000 car. But... Uh, of course, that was after I had been a mechanic there. When he offered me the mechanic job, I had a very interesting two years there, working on the first Formula One car. Went to Monaco as one of the two mechanics, McLaren's first ever uh, Formula One race. And uh, then worked on Can-Am and the Ford Project and all of that. So, yeah, I had to slog away and do the all-nighters before he actually gave me the works drive. So the can -Am was no longer the Bruce and Denny show, it was the Howden and Denny show. Or was Denny driving with you? No, I drove in can -Am for BRM uh, because when, when Bruce was killed, uh, my drive evaporated uh, because he said to me, you're my protege, but I obviously wasn't anyone else's protege. So I finished up at BRM and I did race at Riverside Times Grand Prix in the BRM Can-Am car and I finished third behind the two Works McLaren. So there I was on the podium with Denny and that was a big thrill for me. <laughs> Turning to Mike, sort of similar, similar backstory, Mike. Well, yes, I uh, started racing in 1965 and... Uh, as all youngsters with no money, struggled to build my own car with my father and uh, and run it, and eventually having to sell it to uh, pay off all the debts, basically, and then scrounging drives where where I could. Eventually, luckily through uh, Formula Three and Formula Five Thousand, I I did a my first Grand Prix at Watkins Glen in 1974, uh, having sadly failed to qualify for. Uh, I think the Italian, Austrian and Canadian. Um, I was driving for Team Ensign, Mo Nunn, a uh, lovely man, but uh, the car wasn't so lovely. Uh, Vern Schupen had left the, the team and uh, every time I turned the car left, it lost fuel pressure. So it was very difficult when you have 30 cars trying to get 25 places on the grid. You had to be on it. And uh, to lose fuel pressure and so on, uh, the, car, the engine basically went flat until the fuel pressure came back. So bless him, he changed the fuel system between Canada and America, and I qualified um, next to, bless him, Graham Hill, and just behind my hero, uh, my other hero, obviously Howden was the, the, the big one, but uh, Ronnie Peterson was my hero. And to be uh, a tenth or two off Ronnie in a Lotus 72 around Watkins Glen, I was chuffed a bit. So I've never been so happy to uh, not be able to sleep in a hotel room the night before because I was so nervous to be on the grid. Um, the car sadly had more problems in the race and I, I uh, did a pit stop for about six laps while they got a new pressure relief valve for the engine. Uh, I went out and I had a, 
I hooked up with Chris Amon, who was driving a, the BRMP 201. Um, lovely man, uh, sadly missed, as uh, as they all are, our friends that we lost. But um, at the end of that uh, race meeting, a Mr. Stanley came and spoke to me and said, did I have anything for 1975? I said no. Absolutely, yes. It's actually not what I would call him, but <laughs> eventually. Um, they invited me to test a P160 at Snetterton, which I thought was a brilliant car. I really enjoyed driving that. And to be honest, I think the P160 on that test day was the only time I've ever driven a BRM and gone home without the engine or something going wrong. It was a brilliant car. Chris was there testing the P201. And after Chris had vacated that during the afternoon, I drove the P201. But on the second or third lap, it sadly put a rod out through the side. And um, after lengthy negotiations, which is a story uh, in itself with Mr. Stanley in London, uh, I signed to race for them in 1975. We went to Argentina. I looked at the P201, I looked at the engine, and it was the engine that the rod came out at Snetterton, they'd welded the block, and so I thought, this really possibly isn't a good omen. Uh, needless to say, it didn't finish in Argentina, I went to Brazil, the next Grand Prix, the engine failed again, and when I got back to London, Mr. Stanley called me to a meeting and said, this is not good enough. And I said, you're absolutely right, it's not good enough. And my suggestion was, I'd been racing with uh, Cosworth V8s. I suggested that they put a Cosworth V8 in the back of the 201, because I was impressed with the chassis, um, to get some reliability, because I thought I could move up the grid with a Cosy in the back. Uh, so he fired me instantly, was very, very abusive. He said he would never put an American engine in a BRM. If only I tried to explain. It was built in Northampton by Mike Costin and Keith Duckworth. It was reliable. It was a British engine. He said it's funded by Ford, therefore it's American. It will not go in one of my cars. I, if only I'd have thought, well, you put an American V8 in your Can-Am car and it's pretty good uh, but anyway sadly that was my end of uh, the end of my association with BRM. Yeah I had a few blow-ups with the V12s and uh, of course they didn't have enough money to keep building new engines and as Mike pointed out they used to weld patches on the blocks but what I did find out eventually was that if you look to see how many patches you might find one that had four patches on it but they'd been line bored and sort of stress relieved so much they used to rev better the, the more patches they had on them. <laughs> Howden, Le Mans, you had a, a pretty stunning career at Le Mans. My uh, Le Mans career started very well in 1972. I drove for Matra and uh, Francois Severe and I led the race for most of the way uh, until we ran into the rainstorm and I was out on intermediates, was trying to not go off the road and get it back to the pits and uh, a lady in a Corvette came and drove straight in the back of me. So that lost us a lot of time. We finished second. I went back the next, at the end of that season, all the non-French drivers were sent out of the team. Uh, no Ross Booths, no Kiwis. So uh, they recommended me to Gulf and I went and drove for Gulf. But we broke down halfway through the race, and then the following year, two years later, I went and drove for Jello, and uh, we had a gearbox problem in the Porsche, and I didn't even get halfway. And then the next year, the car broke down before I even got in it, and that was it. That was the end of my Le Mans career. So second place is the best I came out of it. But That's not bad, though, is it? No. Well, listen, guys, it's great to see you here. I hope you have a great day here at Prescott. We've got some lovely cars and the weather's perfect. So what could be nicer? Thanks very much indeed.